Hi everyone, my name is Kyle Berlin, I'm a graduate student at MIT, and today I'm going to talk about a little bit of work I've been doing with paleomagnetic measurements of CO conjures and the implications of our work to the evolution of the early solar system. So to get started, here's an overview of my poster. I'm going to be zooming in in specific areas to talk about it. So first, let's talk about the protoplanetary disk. So for people that are not familiar with the protoplanetary disk, these are essentially the birthplace of planets and stars um, in, the, in the universe. And there's good reason to believe that magnetic fields are active in those environments and they play a central role in their evolutions. One way to probe those magnetic fields is by using samples that form in this environment. And um, an example of those samples are meteorites. One interesting thing about meteorites in the early solar system is that uh, isotopic measurements support the presence of two reservoirs, the non-carbonaceous and the carbonaceous one. And by using samples that form in those two distinct reservoirs, we can ultimately probe the magnetic field at different locations uh, in the early solar system. So here, uh, we target the carbonaceous reservoir by using carbonaceous chondrites, specifically two samples. Um, and what's interesting about carbonaceous chondrites is that um, they are very pristine samples. They were never melted since their formation, and they have multiple components, the refractive inclusions, the matrix, and the chondrules. Here, we focus on the chondrules, specifically the dusty olivine chondrules. So those are very robust paleomagnetic targets, very rare to find among those samples. And uh, we target those uh, with um, squid microscopy, alternating field demagnetization, and area methods to determine uh, the paleo intensities and demagnetization curves. We also conducted unidirectionality and conglomerate tests to determine the origin of the magnetization. And what we observe is that the conjures acquired a stable TRM in the solar nebula environment. We also coupled our results with models that describe how the magnetic field uh, change in protoplanetary disk as a function of distance from the sun. And what we observe is that our measurements support either the presence of inhomogeneities, meaning certain areas of the disk have higher concentrations of magnetic field lines than others, or the presence of increasing accretion rate over time, so more materials being dragged uh, towards the main um, star. For the case of inhomogeneities, that could be related to the presence of the gap that kept those two reservoirs apart, and they could also be related with magnetic mechanisms that open the gap. For the increase in the accretion rate, that could be associated with um, um, accretion bursts in the early solar system. Regardless of the interpretation in homogeneities or, or um, increasing accretion rate, those two argue for complex transport and active um, um, mechanisms in, in, in the early solar system. Um, feel free to swing by my poster and reach out and we can talk more about it. Thank you so much and have a nice day.